Alright, in this video I'd like to show you how to do a multi-group analysis and I'm starting here with a model that's already constructed that's a relatively simple confirmatory factor analysis. We've got a latent variable x1 and that latent variable has um, factor loadings across four different variables. And just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to rename these paths A, B, C, and D. And we do have the constant in here modeling the level of this latent variable um, that may come into play later. Structures. So, um, oh, let's actually fix this to one, and then we can free that one. That'll work a little better. There we go. So, let's say there were two groups that you wanted to see how this factor fit for. Um, so we've got a couple dichotomous variables um, here to choose from. And so, for example, whatever construct this is, you might think that it works a little bit differently for men versus women. You might think about a construct like depression, um, where depression is real in both men and women, but the variables the, the manifest things that we look at for depression actually look different for men and women. And so if you have good measures of that, that's actually an empirical question. And so the way to answer that in SEM is to do a multi-group analysis. And in Onyx, there's a particular way to do that. And so what we're going to do is copy and paste this exact model. And so it has appended these with a little apostrophe. Um, we actually want to have it be those actual variables. So we're going to take that apostrophe off. And just for this, for this demonstration, Let's um, let's call x1 female. It's the female version of this construct, and for this one, it's male. Now it is estimating the exact same thing, top and bottom, which is what you'd expect. Oh, it's still not seeing those variables over there. Let me let me drag them. And I can tell because it's light gray. Okay, so now, <clears throat> now we've got this variable, this construct being modeled on top and bottom, top for females, bottom for males. Um, and what we want to know is, does this look the same for males and females? So to run a multi-group analysis in uh, Onyx, what we need to do is to tell this, this top model that it is female, and we need to tell this bottom one that it's male. And to do that, we select these variables and we say add grouping. And when we do that, these little diamonds appear, and the diamonds have the number zero in them. So what that's saying is that these are going to be estimated for group zero. But the thing is, we still need to tell it what the grouping variable it is. So we need to take female, and if you carefully drag it into the diamond, the diamond turns black. And that's how you know that you've been successful. And then we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. We're going to add grouping here.
it's the same variable. But instead of running this for group 0 on the bottom, we want to have the group be 1. Oops, I'm doing this backwards. And the bottom is going to be 0, and the top is the top is going to be group 1, because 1 is female. <clears throat> so now you see that you are actually getting different estimates here. You have variances that are a little different, and then you've got um, 1.17 versus 1.15. 1.28, 1.25, 1.37, 1.33. And so the question becomes, are those differences real? Or are they just statistical artifacts? And so as with many things, we do a chi-square change test. This serves as the unconditional model. And so we want to record, I, I shouldn't say unconditional, I should say unconstrained. Minus two log likelihood, degrees of freedom. So in the unconstrained model, it says the estimate is still improving we really should wait for it to improve. I am still going to record this just for the sake of time. But you really would want to wait if this were a real analysis. 2451.82 with four, 46 degrees of freedom. So now what we do is we are going to constrain the factor loadings. So instead of this one being B and this one being B prime, we're going to make them both B. And instead of this one being C and this one being C prime, we're going to make them both say C, and so on. And so now we've constrained the factor loadings. And we're going to get a new log likelihood. You'll notice I made three constraints, which means it's going to fit worse. How much worse? Let's see, 2454.34. Now, unlike some other kinds of analyses, at each step, you need to be able to justify the constraints in order to move on. So here, it's 2.52. Delta delta df. And so that's non-significant, so we can keep going. What about the variance? Is that justified? In some ways that's just picking up this other path. In some ways. because they really could have different variances. Twenty four fifty six point nine four for fifty degrees of freedom. Two point six for one, still not significant. So we can keep going. Now, is this mean difference between females and males? 
So notice we're leaving the constraints, and you need to leave the constraints in order to make further comparisons, because if you don't leave the constraints, then you're measuring different things. So you can impose a variety of constraints and test each one. Oops. So now I've constrained the means to be the same over time. Not over time, just to be the same. And again, you really want to actually wait 2460.72. So anytime you add a constraint, you expect expect the fit to get worse. You expect the negative two log um, negative two log likelihood to increase. The question is, is is that increase more than what you would expect? Three point seven eight for one degree of freedom. Boy, that is close. So, pull my favorite chi-square table. The critical value is 3.84, and this is 3.78. So that is non-significant. So we didn't constrain the errors here, which we could. But in essence, what we've shown here is that these factors, or that this factor, generally works the same across males and females. And the nice thing about these multigroup analyses is that you have something to say either way. You can either say there weren't statistically significant differences, so your model generalizes, or if there are differences, you can say, hey, we're actually picking up on different things here. Either way, you kind of have something good to say often. So that is uh, a basic presentation on how to do a multigroup analysis.